Hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on direct drive permanent magnet motor for washing machine application. I am Sumit Singh, an electric motor expert at AM Works. AM Works is a leading provider of electromagnetic simulation software for electrical and electronic designs. Our products are mainly embedded in the most popular CAD platforms SolidWorks and Inventor. They cover a wide range of applications ranging from electric motors, generators, transformers and power electronics at the low frequency end of spectrum to antennas and various wireless circuits and components at the high frequency end of the electromagnetic spectrum. I request all the participants to please feel free to ask your questions using the chat box option and we will address all of the questions at the end of our presentation. So here is the today's agenda. First we will see some of the features about the direct drive and belt drive system for the washing machine application and then we will see what are the design challenges to design a PMSM motor and what are the different EMWorks solutions. Then we will go through its design specifications and then we will see the results obtained for both the models which we are going to discuss in our today's webinar using EMWorks 2D software. And then later I will be also demonstrating you the software and how to obtain the electromagnetic performance. Later I will conclude the presentation. Well. Here you can see a two different arrangements of a washing machine system and since our presentation is about the direct drive washer so let us understand first what is the belt drive system. So as you can see in a belt drive washer a motor turns the washer turbs via a belt drive a mechanical system that uses a pair of pulley connected to the central shaft with a flexible band or belt. The belt drives the transfers the power to the motor so it can rotate it and then you have a universal motor placed over here. Overall the belt drives are very cheap to produce and are very easily fixable because the parts of them are very common because this is very a universal motor and we just have a belt which need to be replaced if it's broken and everything becomes very simple driven washer system. Well, moving on to the next part. On the right hand side we have a direct drive system. In a direct drive washer the motor is typically mounted right underneath the tub as you can see in the image whereas belt drive washers rely on the belt drive to transmit power. The direct drive motor use a complex set of electromagnets to produce torque that in turn spins the tub to the washing machine. In more direct terms if I explain direct drive motors rely more on electromagnets while the belt drive motor use friction and rotational power. So for most intents and purposes direct drive washing machines are better they lack the parts that most frequently break on the belt drive systems and are optimized for stability, reliability, performance, longevity and energy efficiency. By contrast, a direct drive washing machine contains circuit boards and other complex parts that make self repairs virtually impossible. This means in the event that the machine does break down which is technically not very likely you're li you're looking at a higher bill to call a washing machine technician to come and fix it so this is like the just a basic overview about the belt drive system and the direct drive system and it is very important to understand before we move ahead and design a PMSM motor exclusively for direct drive system so moving ahead like any machine direct drive washers has its own pros and cons that make it worth using 
to some people and not worth it to others let's take a look at these pros and cons below so as listed you can see it has a high durability and obviously the longer lifespan also such type of system which is like a motor and the drum just to a combination of these two components therefore it's mainly soundless and vibrationless operation also you can achieve a high spinning speed and at the end it is more energy efficient but obviously there are some cons since it's a direct drive motor so it's obviously expensive product and you also need a power electronics circuitry so hence it becomes sensitive electronic parts get involved in such type of system and also its repair cost is higher compared to a belt driven system now let us look at the belt driven systems pros and cons and it con consists of universal motor with pulley and belt and then it's connected to the drum to rotate it finally so first it it is inexpensive because we don't use a high technology of the motor system here it's a universal motor and which is simply connected and it's the size of the motor is not very big here and it's a small size motor which is trying to drive the whole big size drum so it's low cost it has a low cost maintenance and also it can manage high loads whereas obviously due to this arrangement it has a higher noise and also you can lose the power due to transfer of power belt so there are always efficiency low means it's not very efficient the power transfer which is happening here and you lose some of the energy in this friction and rotational motion and also you need to replace this belt every 2 to 3 years so so here is a quick demonstration which we found from the leading manufacturer of this washing machine application LG so they have demonstrated this uh, comparison between the conventional belt driven system and the direct drive system so as you can see what are the pros and cons we discussed it has a uh, more vibration in the overall system whereas direct drive is more comparatively stable than the direct drive and hence it's uh, enhances improves its uh, durability and become energy efficient so well in the battle of the direct drive versus belt drive system everything comes to your requirement and preferences so the direct drive washing machines use as per the statistic 28% less power than the belt drive washing machine this means they are highly energy efficient and inexpensive to operate as well whereas direct drive washer cost around 38% on an average more than the belt driven system therefore it would be a wise to buy a belt driven model if your usage remains on the lower side so designing an electric motor for any application is a challenging task as its electromagnetic thermal and mechanical properties are coupled and need to be taken into consideration together at the same time so based on the design constraints such as here we have a different pole num number of pole and winding configuration the user demands at the motor designer has many choices and criteria to take care of for example if the supply dc input voltage is fixed then the back emf obtained at the base speed should not exceed its terminal voltage at the same time the current and magnet flux linkages magnitude are important factors that determine the rated electromagnetic torque of the machine so estimating and obtaining the performance parameter at no load and full load conditions such as back emf flux density electromagnetic torque and also the losses which generate heat in the motors are the major challenges while designing the motor another characteristic of the motor is the high speed operation that is during the flux weakening mode and to obtain its efficiency plot at different torque and speed so also the determining the structural deformation and stress caused in the stator and rotor due to magnetic forces is also very important so to make this design process simple and easier em works has various motor solution products so let us look into its one by one so 
First, we have the Motor Wizard tool. It is a template-based motor design software that allows users to accurately solve both electric and magnetic problems. It includes electrostatic, magnetostatic and transient solvers equipped with integrated analytical and finite element based solver. Second, we have the AMWorks 2D tool. It is a 2D electromagnetic simulation software that uses the finite element to solve magnetic, electric and transient problems. Electromagnetic works 2D allows you to study the effect of the geometry or simulation parameter changes on the design. It also allows you to couple a transient magnetic study to mechanical motion and thermal. And finally, we have the third tool which is EMS. It enables users to do both electric and magnetic simulations using the complete 3D geometry. EMS is a true multi-physics software that enables user to couple the magnetic and electric design to circuit, motion, thermal and structural analysis on the same model in a hassle-free integrated environment. So today for our analysis we are going to use the second tool which is EMWorks 2D for the analysis purpose. So here is the design specification which we are considering for our analysis. We have taken the two different commercial model. One is by Samsung which is an outer rotor surface mounted permanent magnet motor and it has braid loft PM with 36 slot and 24 poles. Another configuration which is by the LG but they also use an outer rotor design with a 12 pole with a rectangular conventional flat magnet with 36 slots. Both the models are outer rotor design configuration because it has to be directly connected to the outer drum of the washing machine. So for just for the analysis purpose we have scaled down both the commercial model and we have set the base speed as 1400 rpm with input current of 10 ampere and also we have kept the outer diameter of the both the models to 313 millimeter and also the stack length was set to be 49 millimeter moving ahead about the materials we have you chosen the core for the stator and the rotor core as m27 steel with a thickness of 0.47 millimeter and then we have a permanent magnet ndfeb n28 whose be, uh, the residual flux density is close to one tesla and then of course the conductors we have chosen as a copper material well to begin the performance analysis in AMWOX 2d software first different study settings are needed to be done such as the first is material we have a huge database of material for different parts of the motor and generators so we can choose from the database available in the software and also user can edit its own property or and can add its own material if required then comes the boundary conditions where we set the outer space as a air potential and then we need to select the different parts of the rotor to compute the torque or the forces as per your requirement and then we set the mesh of the model and using the mesh control you can define its uh, dimension and sizing of the mesh what you want to consider for it and as you know like as per the mesh sizing and the number of parameters a number of steps consider it, the simulation take its own time if you have a more finer mesh obviously the simulation runtime will be longer and then last we have a winding where you can choose whether it's voltage control or current control and then you can either input your own current waveform also or you can just choose from the list either you want a sinusoidal current source or a DC current source which I'll be demonstrating you in the uh, later part and then you set the frequency and its amplitude and delay so after we're done with the setting we run the analysis and once it is completed we can check the performance curves using the result tab
So to begin with, first let's look at its flux linkage and cogging torque for both the design. So as you know, the the rate of change in the air gap flux density at the magnet edges, like as one move from one magnet pole to the next, it contributes to cogging torque. And generally, the faster the rate of change in flux density, the greater the potential of increased great uh, cogging torque. So in the case of Bradloff PM motor design, the due to its shaping, we have a better flux linkage and which is closer to sinusoidal as we can see here. At the same time, if we look at its uh, rectangular PM motor design, it's more kind of a triangular waveform kind of coil flux linkage because of its rectangular shape of the magnet and it, and at the same time if it we look at its uh, cogging torque obviously the cogging torque uh, for the Bradloff PM motor is lesser compared to the rectangular PM motor design and also as you can see the cogging torques are very high here because we haven't skewed our geometry we have compared both of them without unscrewing and uh, that's why you can see a higher torque cogging torque ripple but considering the fact and the situation in which the model both the model has been simulated we can see that Bradloff PM motor design leads to a lower cogging torque because of its shaping feature and also it's interesting to observe here is that uh, the flux linkage is lesser because we lose the magnet volume because of its shaping and uh, the overall magnetic flux has reduced and then therefore its flux linkage has also reduced compared to the rectangular PM motor design. Moving ahead we have the back EMF. So the back EMF in both the cases are almost the, the shape of it is same but even though if we do the proper THT analysis we can see that the Bradloff PM motor will have a lesser harmonic contents in its back EMF due to its shaping which eliminates harmonic contents due to the slotting effect and uh, overall we have got the induced back EMF voltage almost the same for both the cases. Next moving ahead to onload analysis. So since it's a BLDC motor, I've supplied a square wave current for both Bradloff design and rectangular PM motor and we have set the peak amplitude at 10 ampere and uh, obviously the number of poles were different because in Bradloff we had 24 number of poles and for the rectangular design we have a 12 number of poles so the frequency and the time period has it has been different for both the design but the type of excitation is given same in both the cases. So the first let us look at, at its magnetic flux density plot in both Bradloff and rectangular PM motor. So since as we discussed that the number of magnet poles are higher but overall the magnet volume has reduced therefore the, the peak magnetic flux density which we can see is around 2 tesla and also the mainly the saturation is happening inside the ro uh, stator tooth body not in the state uh, rotor core so well and it, since it's within the, its uh, material properties limit saturation limit so i think this design looks good on the other side we have a rectangular pm motor flux density plot and uh, we can see here the rotor part is also getting saturated in its back iron core and it's going peak up to 2.2 tesla. Since we found that Bradloff PM motor design was more, more appropriate, so moving ahead we'll be just discussing about the Bradloff PM motor right now. So here we have its onload torque which is uh, around an average of 22 newton meter and since we haven't skewed it has a high torque pulsation next we also obtained its code loss and using the emo study software you can segregate the total code loss into its which is the eddy losses 
hysteresis losses and the excess losses and then you can see the total code loss if you take the simple average of this waveform you will be able to find the exact code loss magnitude next using this amworks 2d software you can also obtain the current density plot of your design so here on the left hand side the coils are excited by 10 ampere and you can see its current density in the slots and also to understand its flux pattern you can also view in the settings and you, you can also look at its flux vector plot and understand the direction of the flux flowing and in the interaction between the stator and the rotor core next we also perform its thermal study and uh, you can see the temperature rise in both the models due to the stator core which is the wind uh, con which consists of a stator winding which is the main source of heat generation so since the excitation was the same so the temperature rise due to these coils are almost the same which is around 129 degrees celsius and it's well within the limit of its insulation class so now i would like to demonstrate you to the emx study and how we obtain these results so here we are into the solid work platform so once we are into the SOLIDWORKS platform, you can go to tools, then click on the EMWorks product and then here you can see the product EMS and EMWorks 2D and then you can launch EMWorks 2D. So to begin with, first we need to build the sketch of our model which we have already done for the stator part, for the rotor part and once we have the design ready and also we have launched the software tool which we need for our today's analysis we can go and click on the emworks 2d then so here i have performed a no load and unload analysis for the bread loaf design and uh, our model is ready we have a magnets mounted on the rotor core and we have different coils so the, the first thing becomes the important is to set the materials so we go to material section where we choose the material for the stator core such as for the copper coils we have put all the copper materials and for the stator we have used m27 grade steel and then similarly we need to set the materials for the rotor part for the magnets we have chosen n28 ndfeb magnet and for the rate uh, for the rotor code we have selected m27 steel also we need to send the outer band and outer air region as air so once the material is set magnetic vector potential as air and we create a region around the our simulation next is to select all the rotor code and also to uh, set for our competition whether we need to compute force or torque so for Today's analysis we have selected to compute torque and then comes the mesh which you can always use the mesh control and you can see the mesh for our today's analysis. So this is the mesh set done for the model and let's hide this mesh and the next feature is, comes the very important is the winding pattern because since we are running this model as a motoring up mode so we need to set the winding excitation so first we create a winding and we select the A phase A positive phase and A negative phase the go and the return path of your coil and once the winding is assigned to the different slots you can choose whether you want current driven coil or a voltage driven coil and then we have a current source whether it's pulse current or it's sinusoidal current or you can import your own current time driven curve so since the first analysis is about the no load analysis we have set the current amplitude as zero and you can also set the winding properties which is uh, the 
thickness of your diameter of your coil or, or you can choose the AWG configuration which we have chosen as 19AWG and the number of turns. So once we are done with the winding setting, we right click on the study and we uh, create uh, click on the properties where we set the speed of the machine where what is the end time duration and the start time of the duration and then we couple it to its uh, rotational motion and we select the parts which is the moving component and the band around it so once we are done with all these settings we right click on the study and then we run the model before running the model you can also click on the validate before run and then you can see if you have missed any of the setting or if any of the, your parameter is not appropriate and once you run you can right click on the result tab and then you can see different results so since we have performed a no load study so i'll be first interested to say it's flux linkage so we click on the different parameters we select we have selected the flux here then i'll click all the different phases i'll add into its parameter and then click on the plot preview so you can see its flux linkage similarly we can see it's a torque which will be represented here as a cogging torque you can add this into your parameter and then click on the plot preview you can also click on the plop up plot feature where you get a list of the table and you can ex extract this parameter into excel sheet and you can plot the results and then you can also change its uh, general settings legend you can adjust its curve and different properties thickness and also you can rename its axis and different positions for a better presentation so this is how you obtain the Kong torque. The next result, let us look at its uh, induced voltage because it's a non-load analysis. So you can see the voltage obtained in all the stator coils. You can add into your parameters and plot preview. And here we have the back EMF for our analysis. Well, there are different many parameters which you can obtain and you can compute. Similarly, for the full load analysis you can go to the winding setting you can duplicate this study you can go to the winding properties and click on the phase a and then you can choose the current source and here i've used my import current curve and you can import your 120 degree mode current commutation and for your bell dc motor analysis you can run the analysis so let us look at its torque because now we have supplied current into its stator coil so we go to torque we add its parameter and then plot preview and you can see its torque pulsation let us also look at its flux density plot so you can go and click on the right side you can choose a fringe plot if you are interested in vector plot or a contour line plot so let's look at its flux density plot first so this is what you get and also since in the presentation I have shown you the animation you can right click and animate its versus time so similarly also you can see it's a vector plot by choosing the different magnetic definition and you have these plots also available within a quick few seconds let's hide it so there are many other parameters which you can see the current density and other loss densities and many more so this is how we analyze the model using the emox 2d software well moving back to our presentation so in today's webinar two different topologies of surface mounted permanent magnet motor were simulated and we obtained its magnetic performance and also we saw its thermal performance for a stator specifically for the stator coils and this was done using the emx 2d software and we also found that for the bradle of pm topology it had a lower cogging torque ripple and also the harmonic content in the coil flux linkage was lesser compared to the rectangular shaped permanent magnet design 
and we also observed that the PM motor design used by the Samsung and LG for direct drive washing machine application can be an alternative solution to fulfill the growing demand for energy efficiency and durability of these washers. But however, in the nutshell, the selection of the motor topology, whether it's induction motor, permanent magnet synchronous motor or the switch reference motor, any type of motor, it's a trade-off between the constraints of the application and what kind of performance requirement we need from these home appliances. So here is the references which we have considered for our today's presentation. Thank you so much for attending the webinar. Now the floor is open for a Q&A session. Thank you so much.